A group of climbers is ascending a peak. The higher they climb, the more the air pressure decreases. With a decrease in air pressure, less and less oxygen is available. This increases the climbers' heart rates and makes their breathing faster. Due to insufficient acclimatization, some of the climbers get ill. They suffer from symptoms of acute mountain sickness, AMS, including headaches and a change in appetite. Some suffer from dizziness and others from nausea. Eager as they are, the group ignores these symptoms and keeps climbing. They are not aware that AMS can progress to high-altitude cerebral edema, or HACE. In short, brain functioning is impaired. When this happens, walking becomes uncoordinated, a strong headache will emerge, and climbers may also appear confused. The group is unaware of another altitude illness, namely high-altitude pulmonary edema, or HAPE, which can emerge independently or simultaneously with the previous two. The lungs begin to suffer badly, breathing is difficult and makes a rattling noise, coughing increases and performance levels suffer severely. These symptoms are clear red flags which urge you to descend immediately. Whether suffering from HACE, HAPE or AMS, reaching the summit and returning safely to the valley seems highly unlikely. The key remedy is to descend. The climbers should take appropriate medication and may need additional treatment such as time in a hyperbaric bag or receiving extra oxygen. However, these options should only be used to enable safe descent. Could this have been avoided? Well, yes. Look at this team further down the mountain. They took a slower and much more careful approach and their climbers were well acclimatized. Some pre-acclimatized at sea level in a hypoxic tent, which simulates high altitude conditions. Note that further experience is needed to devise optimal protocols to use this method. Others acclimatized for several days at 2,500 meters above sea level, taking day tours. When they started their ascent, they took it slowly. At 3,000 meters and higher above sea level, they slept at progressively higher altitudes, never more than about 500 meters higher than the night before. Every three to four days, they also took one day to rest. As a result, they acclimatized, greatly reduced the risk of altitude illness, and reached the top. That's responsible climbing. So next time you plan a high climb, plan well, go slowly, and include an extra day of rest.